Hey everyone, this is the first video in a series of build logs where I design and build an open source version of the Dyson Light Cycle Task Light, aka the DIY Sun Lamp. In this video, I'll be designing and assembling the basics of the motion system. The system consists of three main parts, the vertical axis, the horizontal axis, and this carriage thing that joins them together. This carriage is going to be the main focus of the video, and I'm really excited to get into it because it's my favorite piece on the Dyson lamp itself. And it's one that seems simple on the surface, but actually has a couple of complexities hidden inside of it that I want to talk about. Before we do that, let's talk about these rails. You'll see that on the Dyson lamp, they use these custom designed aluminum rails on both axes, and these do a couple of things. Number one, they provide the main structural element of the lamp. Uh, but also importantly, they provide like a little track for these rollers that you see in the carriage. We want a solution that does these things as well, but I don't really have the tools, materials, or funds to make my own custom rails like Dyson could. An off-the-shelf solution would be much more preferable, and I think I found the perfect thing. These are linear rails from Open Builds. They're made of aluminum, just like the Dyson lamp. So they're light and they're strong. I think they're gonna be perfect for the structure of our lamp, but even more importantly, what's great about these is that Open Builds also sells uh, these rollers or these wheels. Uh, there's a system of these that come in a couple of different colors and sizes, but they fit perfectly within the profile of these rails. Uh, so we can use these rails along with a carriage uh, to pretty easily replicate the two axes of the Dyson lamp and the carriage system that connects them. I think this is gonna work for now. I'm gonna start with this and see how it goes. We're going to need two of these. They're 500 millimeters long each. One is going to be the vertical axis and then this second one will be the horizontal axis. One thing I want to do even before I get started is find a way to mount this lamp to my desk. This will just make it easier to work. I don't know if this is the final design or not, but it'll do the trick for now. You can see I just have this 3D printed part that's held in place with a normal C-clamp. And then using a open build spacer, uh, this is a 40 millimeter spacer, I can connect the desk mount with the lamp itself. I went ahead and I tapped this hole and designed this little mount uh, for the bottom. This is going to align with the profiles here. It stops it from spinning around. And then I'm just going to mount it into that threaded hole using an open build screw. And I can simply slide this on and it stays in place. So now I have a freestanding vertical axis. It has a little bit of play um, there's only so much I can do to eliminate that, but I think we'll revisit that in the future to try to get that down to be as minimal as possible. So I'm pretty happy with this. We have a vertical axis that's mounted on the desk. It rotates around just like the original lamp. And with this, we can start thinking about how to add this second axis, the horizontal axis, which needs to move up and down like this and also forward and back. Uh, and the part that allows us to do this is what I'm calling the carriage. And I'm really excited to get into this carriage because it's one of my favorite parts on the whole project. Not only does it allow for this cool range of motion, um, but it has a couple of unique qualities that I hadn't appreciated before I started working on this project. So I'm excited to get into that. So looking at the carriage more closely, we can notice a couple of things. One is just the overall construction, which is pretty simple. Uh, just three rollers on this side and then three rollers hidden on the opposite side. So I think that part is going to be pretty straightforward. We can, we can figure that out. The more complicated piece is this right here. This one wheel is something that I've been thinking about a lot on this project. You'll notice on this side of the carriage that two of the three wheels are static. They just sit below the rail and support it, while this top wheel is dynamic. It's actually spring-loaded. Why is that? Originally, I thought that it was to aid in assembly so that you can easily slide in this horizontal rail by pulling back this top wheel. And that might be the case, but I actually think it serves a more important function. In a design where these three wheels are fixed in place, anytime you went to move the lamp, there would be a perceptible level of wobble that takes place before the lamp actually moves, which is really not what we want. We can't mount them statically. We actually want the wheels to provide a constant clamping force on the rails. That would provide a really snug fit that meant that anytime that you went to move either axis, it would respond immediately rather than having any play in the system. And that's what this mechanism is solving for. This spring-loaded wheel provides a constant clamping force on our rail and eliminates that wobble completely. And that's what we need to replicate on our lamp. I spent a lot of time thinking about how I could replicate this mechanism. I know it doesn't look all that complicated, but I think replicating it would involve a fair amount of custom parts. 
And that doesn't really work for me. It doesn't align with the goals of the project, and I think it would make the carriage overall unnecessarily complicated. Luckily, I think I found an even better solution to this. This is called an eccentric spacer, and it's also made by Open Builds. And I actually think this one part can solve all of our problems when it comes to applying pressure to our rails. The thing you'll notice about it straight away is that unlike a traditional concentric spacer, which has a hole in the center, this hole is slightly off center, which means if we mount a wheel through it, the axis of rotation can be adjusted just by turning the spacer. We can adjust the axis of rotation to move the wheel just slightly closer to the rail, giving us that snug fit that we want. You'll see what I mean once the carriage is fully assembled, but I wanted to stop and appreciate how clever and simple this little solution is. This one part is going to dramatically simplify the overall design of the carriage. With the snugness problem solved, I can move on to designing the carriage. This design went through a couple of variations, but they're all variations on the same basic shape. Many of these variations were attempts to add rigidity and keep the plastic part from flexing when it's under stress. And I also explored an idea where I modeled the spacers directly into the carriage. My thinking here was that these features would add stiffness but also reduce cost. I even explored a couple of options that were more curvy and organic, and I like the way these turned out, but not really the look I'm going for. After a lot of iterating, this is the final design that I'm going with. You can see here that I ditched the idea of adding stiffening geometry, and I went towards a more sleek and minimal direction. I think we can compensate for the lack of rigidity just by amping up our print settings and adding a lot of infill. It doesn't look like much now, but when we turn on the wheels, you can start to see how it works. This side will house the horizontal axis between these three wheels, and the opposite side will house the vertical axis between these three. I've modeled in countersinks for the M5 nuts so they sit flush to the surface. This should keep our carriage looking clean and polished. Now we can see how the eccentric nuts are going to work. Once the wheel is mounted, you can access the eccentric nut between the carriage and the wheel, and when you rotate it, the wheel actually moves up and down. Now it's time to print this and we can assemble it. Our carriage is printed and assembled, has all six wheels on both sides, and now we can use it to join the vertical and horizontal axes. So to do that, I have my vertical axis right here, and I'm just going to slide our carriage on top. Uh, so now we have vertical movement, and our horizontal axis is right here. So I can just slide this onto the carriage, and in addition to vertical motion, I now have horizontal and even rotational. Uh, so you can see already that it's starting to resemble the range of motion that we saw in the original Dyson lamp, and it's really exciting. Earlier in the video I mentioned that if we didn't have a constant pressure on both rails, the system was going to have a lot of wobble in it, and as you can probably hear, we do have a lot of wobble. That means we need to tighten our eccentric nuts, that's why these are so critical. So all I need to do is go in and turn the two eccentric spacers that I have on both sides. I'll use the wrench from Open Builds to do that. And so I just turn it on the horizontal axis until it feels smooth and snug, and then repeat the same thing on the vertical axis. Uh, it's a little too tight, actually. There we go. So now you can see I can wobble it. There's none of that rattle anymore. It's totally snug, and now it's really smooth. Uh, it's very satisfying to move around. 
Now that the carriage is finished and everything's assembled, there's one glaring issue that I can't really ignore anymore, which is that the horizontal arm doesn't actually stay in place when you lift it. What we need is to attach the carriage to a counterweight. That way it'll stay in its vertical position. The counterweight also has the added benefit of making the horizontal axis feel lighter, which makes the whole thing move more smoothly. This will be the focus of my next video, and it's actually a really interesting and satisfying part of the project, so I encourage you to check it out if you're interested. After that, we'll finally get into lighting, electronics, and cooling. So stay tuned, subscribe to keep watching and support the project, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!